Hey guys, this is Derek from Pacific Coast Auto Japan, and here we are looking at the vehicle bought from auction for the USA. One of the coolest vehicles that we have ever exported here. This is a 1990 Toyota MR2 with the full TRD wide body kit on it. This wide body kit is called the 2000 GT. Name comes from the old 60s Toyota 2000 GT and is probably the coolest looking body kit that I've seen on any car ever. Not only that, one of the coolest looking cars that I have ever seen or driven or exported possibly. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Before we get into it, the TRD, I'm just going to say a little bit of history of this. So Toyota made 200 vehicles of the TRD, uh, here's the auction sheet, TRD 2000 GT, it says right there. This is not an official one of 200. This one is the body kit that Toyota also sold uh, at the same time, and you could put the body kit on the car if you wanted. And so this one has just the body kit, it is not the full kit. However, it is still extremely cool. Now I'm gonna show you something a little bit fun here. They have a badge in here. It says TRD on it. And it says uh, T9910. That badge is probably not the official one. Some people in Japan will do that on a car that has the same kit or the same look as a uh, limited production car. I don't think that this one actually is. Neither did the seller. Uh, on the auction sheet and I'll show you that in a second. Before we close this hood I'm just going to mention some aftermarket parts. It has the strut tower bar here and it has a braking brace for if you wanted to do heavy duty braking and considering this is a mid-engine car it has all the weight in the back and so braking is enhanced because of that. Going to lower this, going to go over the condition of the car, auction sheet, interior, exterior, all that stuff. First off just a quick peek at the engine and so it is what well, looks like a stock engine. Do we get to see? There we go. Okay, that cross brace is stock for this car. It's a 2000cc 3SGTE engine. And so that's uh, stock it puts out, I think this model in Japan puts out like 215-ish horsepower. This one's running at 0.5 bar boost, which is seven and a half pounds. It's as fast as your normal Toyota MR2, so I don't think it's been modified, but it is a fairly big turbo. It's a CT26. I'll give you a quick look here. And the cool thing about the MR2 is that it has intercooler and air filter fed by these giant intakes on the side here. So this one goes directly into the air intake over here. Has an HKS aftermarket air filter. However, it is crumbly and so it needs to be replaced. And then this one on this side goes right into a fairly large side mount intercooler over here. And I was just thinking about this when I was shooting this. I watched a video from Engineering Explained and they were talking about how manufacturers don't paint their intercoolers black. Well, there is this one. And that one. And that one. And that one. There are a lot of them. But I guess mostly like 80s and 90s cars from Japan. Not to say that the video wasn't excellent. You should go check it out and all of his other videos because they're pretty awesome. Okay, aftermarket extra brace here, so cross brace and extra brace on a car that's already pretty uh, structurally integral. Is that the right word? Um, and so yeah, extra, extra, extra bracing. Okay, and timing belt change in 1998 at 75, 150,000 kilometers. Okay, just gonna close this up. We'll go over to the auction sheet. We're gonna show the exterior right after this. So here's the information we had from the auction. It's a 1990 MR2, auction grade R, because it's been in an accident. And right front inner panel and core support are dented. Seems like a very mild accident as far as accidents go, and the vehicle checks out really well. And so R grade cars can be a little bit riskier. In this case, it paid off, I think. Interior is B, 139, 809 kilometers. The dollar sign here refers to what it says here. 5-speed AC TRD 2000 GT Aero kit on it. Now, notice they don't say it is the official 2000 GT. It's just the Aero parts from it. And so, I will show in more details, but it is a full super wide body kit, rear spoiler, front bumper, and then uh, side skirts. Amazing looking car. Oh my gosh. Okay, so what did the seller say? In 2014, it was at 136,455 kilometers, and... Uh, bu, 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 bu. 
at the Toyota dealership with a uh, history. It shows that uh, the gauges were changed. They were changed at 69, 790 kilometers, and now the gauges show 73, 144 kilometers for a combined 139,809. Mm, it says something here that I can't read. The writing is bad, but that's not why I can't read it. It says uh, modifications to the uh, interior or something like that. Originally it was a uh, non-turbo engine. It's been swapped over to a turbo engine and originally automatic swapped over to a five speed. Now usually these things will lower the price on a car. Engine swap from a non-turbo and a transmission swap. In this case, it looks like it was all done extremely well. The vehicle doesn't look like it was a swapped car. Front accident modifications, aftermarket parts, and everything else See yourself because the seller doesn't really know too much about them. Aftermarket steering wheel wear, that's a TRD steering wheel, it's very nice. Interior dirty and wear, really not that dirty and really not that worn. Okay, uh, what is this? Core support, I already read that one. Various scratches, dents, aftermarket fenders, and driver's seat. The driver's seat is the biggest problem with this car. They put in a bride seat that doesn't go back far enough uh, like the original seat does, so it's only for short people until you change that seat out. Uh, I'm 5'10", it's uncomfortable seating position for me. Aftermarket wheels and suspension, various other aftermarket parts, and underside surface rust, not something I worry about. Surface rust is very mild uh, on these cars, and I've seen plenty of them. Spare tire is missing, you probably saw that because it's supposed to go in there and paint peeling on the roof, some aero uh, part cracks in the paint, and uh, the back panel here has been uh, replaced. Okay, so let's do once around. And I can't tell you how cool I feel driving this car. It is just way cooler than the regular <laughs> MR2. I'm sorry uh, for those of you who have recently bought uh, an MR2, maybe a red one. Um, it is one of the coolest cars I've ever seen and side by side with the other MR2 that we recently bought. This one is super duper amazing looking. Now it's not for everybody, it is way, <laughs> I was going to say way flashy. Here I am channeling my inner Bill and Ted from their excellent adventure. It's way flashy man, gnarly, but it is really cool looking. Okay. So let's have a closer look at it. Here's the front bumper. And of course this front bumper only fits onto the 2000 GT because it feeds right into the wide fenders. You can hear that fan on. You can turn off the fan if you want, but since it was sitting idle, I thought I'd turn the fan on anyway. I'm breaking our company's rule in having the headlights down. We're supposed to have headlights up. And they do function. Okay. So these front fenders, I really like how the line of the hood comes flat. There is no, there's a, like a mild curve there, but there's no actual uh, like bend. And then they come right off the side, no vents in them. To be honest, I really don't like when they put vents on these here on a wide body. I think it looks better with it just sticking out like that. Fitment to the tires is very good. Tires have lots of tread on them and they're 2012 and so vehicle hasn't been driven very much recently. Rears look to be even wider than the fronts are and the intakes there are more aggressive than they typically are. Side skirt is much wider of course. The way the rear fender comes out looks very nice. And looking at it in detail, it looks like this is an official TRD body kit, not a uh, knockoff one. It doesn't look cheap in the same ways that knockoffs tend to look cheap. Rear wing is super aggressive, completes the body. It is a little bit narrow considering how wide the fenders come out here, but I think it suits the car pretty well. And love how the, the body kit meets the tail lights there with it sinking in in order to meet the stock position of the tail lights. And rear bumper looks very cool with a great big exhaust on it there. Just because this is a special car, I'll give it a little bit of a rev. If we get kicked out, 
you'll know why. Okay, pretend you didn't hear that. This one's been converted to the late model tail lights. They are the four round lights. Usually they are completely rectangular on this year of car. Okay, and I guess I'll head over here just because this vehicle is so good looking. We want to see it a little bit more, especially in the light. The other side is a little bit dark. Okay, the gas filler is integrated into the wide body very well. Obviously, you have to replace that or else it would look stupid. Most body kits don't have a replacement for it. And there you have it. Very cool looking vehicle. I'll show you this wide body from this angle. All right, so damages. Let's see what we got. A number of fine cracks in the front bumper in various places. I got pictures of all of these, of course. A missing bit here. And this is one of the bigger damages to it. Okay, it has Japanese rain on it, so you can just wipe that off. Side skirts are good here. Something attached on here. And take a look at this. This, so the body kit comes underneath here, right? And then along here, up to here, and then this whole section is, is all part of the body kit. There's a fine crack where the body kit meets the metal here. Same thing inside here. Okay, typical of a body kit that's been on a car for a while. This one's probably been on here for most of its life. Peeling paint here. And the pearl paint looks to be in really good shape and it's a very nice pearl with hints of blue in it when the sun hits it just right. It looks great. And then two spots of peeling paint right here. Now the auction sheet said the roof is peeling paint. That's really not too bad that it's only these two spots, but if you do want to repair it properly, then you have to paint from here to the A-pillar on the other side. And then one piece to the back fender there. And so you can get a highly skilled body shop in order to fix something like this. It'll be visible to people who really look for it though. All right, onto the interior. I guess we'll take a look at the trunk. So there's a trunk switch there. There's a different switch for the engine cover. Uh, just to let people know in case you ever want to uh, know something like that. That switch is inside here. You just pull your hand in here and then pull that. Okay, trunk is not bad for the type of vehicle it is. Two-seater sports coupes usually don't have big trunks. This one is uh, reasonable. And it doesn't matter. When you have a car like this, you'll find ways to, you know, to carry stuff. All that matters is how nice it looks. Okay, oh, it's not a TRD steering wheel. That was on another car this week. It's a Momo. It is a good steering wheel though. Okay, here is the bride's seat that makes this car not comfortable to drive in. So, power steering, AC, brakes, clutch, everything seems to work. Aftermarket clutch, fog lights there. The uh, boost gauge here is showing maximum boost, but I'm guessing they took the circuit from there to plug it into this one here that actually does work. So we have uh, oil pressure, turbo, and our water temperature is a little bit over 100 there. Uh, you know, it'd be nice to have it less than that, but it has been idling here, just sitting with the AC on. Cars don't like to do that so much. Looks like it has been smoked in, but it doesn't smell inside the car that bad. It doesn't really smell at all. It's just like, you can see it in there. Okay, floor mats are a little bit worn. This has been replaced. This is original. This is 90s. I like the interior of these. It's tight, but not too tight. Dashboard's in good shape. 
you get some of that. Okay. Do very much love these MR2s and they don't get enough love. They are probably better cars than so many of the vehicles that are out there. And yet everybody wants the Skyline. Don't get me wrong, I love Skylines, but this one, yeah, very, very nice. Very happy to see this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed seeing and driving this vehicle myself very much makes me happy so we're going to end the video here hope you hit the subscribe button if you didn't know about us before seeing this video and uh that's going to be the end of it there thanks a lot for watching everybody and have a nice day